to view. All right, we just got backed into backed up into the spe the the uh, parking space. Um, one of the good thing about this camper is is any time that you are in reverse, the reverse camera shows up behind me. But even better yet is it has a microphone. So if somebody is backing me into my space, they're not yelling and screaming outside for me to try to hear or whatever. I can hear them on on the microphone. I just turn the speaker. I just turn the volume up on it, and it comes out of the speakers here inside the inside the RV. So we're already in our spot. So we'll go ahead, put it in park. I'm going to go ahead and turn my radio off. I set the emergency brake. And once your emergency brake is set, then we have to put the leveling jacks down. Uh, you can put blocks under your leveling jacks if you want to, so they don't go into the concrete. Uh, or asphalt. These are concrete sites, so it's perfectly fine to put the jacks down on it. It won't hurt the concrete. In order to do that, here's my. This is my uh, electronic leveling system over here. And normally, in the normal situation, I would I would turn the system on, and I would hit this auto button, and it will automatically configure and level the RV. I've already done it. My middle light is blinking. That's telling me that we're level and we're ready to go. I did that earlier. You can also do it by manual and you can sit there and adjust each one of them manually until you do it. I just hit the automatic button and do it via automatic. Once it's level, I'm gonna turn it back off and we're set and ready. So I'm gonna go ahead and I can turn the engine off, set the keys aside so we don't accidentally turn something on. And then we will commence to hooking up our electric and water. So when I get to the sites, I like to go through with my keys and I like to open up or unlock all the compartments. If you have an emergency and I need to get in there real quick to shut something off or to grab something real quick or anything of that sort, I wanna make sure the doors are open and unlocked so at least I can get into them real quick. We'll come back later on after we got set up and I'll lock the ones that I don't need so it keeps an honest man honest so that nobody gets into it, kids, things of that sort. So first off, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook the electrical up. I keep my electrical and my water piping in this compartment. So I'm going to go ahead and just grab the water system and I will grab the electrical. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. So without the end connected to the power, I'm not in power yet. This is not hot. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to attach it to the RV. I have had this come loose on me one time, so I'm putting it in and twist locking it. I'm going to go ahead and screw, screw it in. 
That'll get a secure connection. If this starts to pull out on you, you can start arcing across there and you can cause an electrical issue. You can burn it out and cause a, uh, uh, a hazardous situation. Now, now, this is the electrical for this, uh, this location. I'm gonna plug in uh, my circuit breaker. Uh, most people, the, your normal cable will just come up to here. We purchased the circuit breaker system. What this also does is, is it regulates the power that is feeding out into the camper. So if there's an electrical spike that comes to the system, uh, electric uh, lightning, if they've got the boxes wired wrong, anything of that sort, then this will stop that from going into the camper, blowing fuses, causing damage to your system and whatnot. Now, before you ever hook up to a campsite or any locations, turn off your breakers. You want to make sure your breakers are all turned off. Okay, one of them is feeding the uh, the 50 amp. We got the 30 amp, and then we got the normal uh, 110 plugs. We're going to be plugging into this plug over here, the 30 amp. I don't know which one it exactly is, so to be just to be uh, safe, I'm on turning them all off. I'll go ahead and plug in my three prong. Okay, and then I'll start turning on my power. Okay, the second one turned on the power. I've got a blue light that's good to go. And this, uh, this, uh, these two lights here can correspond to the, uh, the chart down here to tell you what's going on. And uh, uh, I've got the two yellow lights on the outside there and it's telling me I'm good to go. So we now have power going into the camper. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we're gonna hook up the water. Now, uh, they have a water spigot right here, easily accessible. Uh, easily accessible sometimes they're in holes or whatnot. This is fine here. This is the uh, the uh, Gate valve or ball valve that they've got here for water. I put a splitter on my water uh, Because I, if I need water if I need water to fill up uh, buckets or uh, Clean uh, clean up large pot and pans out anything if I need water I don't have to go unhooking this or going finding a, a, a water site. That's that's open so this gives me the availability on it. I, I want to have a, a short piece of hose sometime. If I ever get an old hose that I don't need, and cut it off. I do have another hose that's spare. I could use it for that if I want to. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach this to the water supply first. Screwing it on. I'm gonna turn my valves off. Each, one, each direction of this has a valve so that I can turn them on and off. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the water on on the spigot. The water's on, nothing's coming out, everything's good to go. Because the first thing I wanna do, on our system for the RV here, we, pur we purchased several items. Number one is we got an elbow. This allows it for whenever we do connect it onto the RV, for it to hang straight down off the side of the RV, uh, rather than hose pointing it straight and the weight of it putting pressure on this connection and bending it and causing it to break. That's not a good thing. So I've got an elbow. Then we bought a uh, water filter. Uh, you can buy these at Walmart. They come in packs of two with the initial kits or you can buy just the filters themselves, whatever, very cheap. Uh, this is gonna take some of the some of the, the nasties out of the water. It's, they're not, it's, it's far from a reverse osmosis, but it's a lot better than nothing. So this is a filtration system here. Camp, I think it's Campco. Is the name right? Camco water filter. Yep. It's Camco. Yep. Yes, and it has the flow. The flow arrow is going up. It will go up and into the camper. On the bottom of this, what I have here, this is a check valve system and a, val a valve pressure regulator. And what this, is, what this does is a lot of campsites, you really don't know what the water pressure is of these campsites. You could be anywhere from little of no water pressure which that is what it is but in a worse situation is, is you're gonna to have too much water pressure if you're at the bottom of the hill so you've got too much elevation from where your water is down to the, at the bottom location you could have too high of pressure and you could be pushing a hundred psi through your water lines if you push a hundred psi into your camper you could end up blowing a weak hose that's in there you remember these things drive down the road they're always wiggling and jostling and whatnot it's, just, it's not like your house where everything is good and solid all the time and whatnot. Uh, these are mobile, things wiggle loose. So this just helps keep that, to, that you don't have a high pressure spike of water pressure going flowing into there. 
and the your your faucets and things of that sort aren't made for that high pressure. So if you've got too high pressure, if you had 100 psi because that you were at the bottom of a hill or something going into your RV, your sink your sink valves could leak, your toilet could leak, anything could leak just because they're just not high quality uh, 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 utensils and things of that sort to you know in these campers. So. This pressure regulator keeps it at 30 to 35. It's adjustable. This this one is adjustable, so I can adjust what water pressure I want it not to exceed. I think they have like 35 psi here. Uh, first things first, though. There's residual water. It's been in this uh, hose since the last time we camped. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on, and we're gonna let this run for a couple minutes to clean the lines out get fresh water in it, get freshness going. And then after that, I'll connect it to the RV. It looks like Tony's peeing. Sorry, Tony. Makes the video funnier. <laughs> he turned away from us. I'm trying not to get myself in a pond. <laughs> All right, so I ran water through the line. She's cleaned out. Should be some fresh water in there now. This is my uh, city water hookup, city water connection. If we were boondocking or we were off grid or something of that sort, I would use my manual feed station up here. I would just hook this down into it, fill up my tank, and that would give me filtered water into my tank. Oh. All right, so I'm gonna hook it up to the city connection. I just set it on there and my piece on the camper rotates. Now, generally speaking, Cindy would be inside when I turn the water on, just to make sure we don't have a water faucet on or something of that sort. So you might want to go inside, check all your water faucets, make sure they're all turned off in the bathroom and in the in, in the uh, sink and whatnot. Uh, but as of now, we'll go ahead and turn the water pressure on, and you'll see the water pressure is going up, and it's stopping about 35 psi. I think that's what I've got it set on. They might have higher pressure here. I don't know. I have this set at 35, so it's only going to allow 35 PSI to go through. So that'll keep her safe. All right. One thing to always remember also, do not turn on your water heater inside until you have water filled the tank. You want to make sure you go in Turn on your hot water, get all the air out of the lines until it is a consistent flow of water through your hot water. Do that both in the, the uh, kitchen and the bathroom. Get all the air out of the lines for your hot water. You e even do it with your cold water, that's fine, so that way you don't get surprised by one of those nasty water spurts whenever they hit. If you try to turn it on before you have water in your hot water tank, if it's an electric water heater, you'll blow the element because the element gets too hot. It needs that water around that element to keep it cool. If it doesn't have water around it and it's out in open air, it'll burn the element out. Same thing at your home, does the same thing at your house. Too. Your hot water heater is the same way. Uh, we have a gas only, so it's not as much of an issue as, for us, except that you would be heating up a tank with nothing in it. So you'd be heating hot air. So hot air expands expansion and then when you turn your air on you're gonna have air pressure or whatnot so always make sure that you've got the air out of it before you turn on your uh, before you turn on your hot water heater. All right. Okay the only thing that's left over is is everyone's favorite is the sewer. Now this is the sewer connection for this site. I'm glad we don't have smell of vision right that's now. Right. All right now we're only here for two days. Generally speaking we do not fill up the the gray or the black tanks in those days. So I don't run the lines out and stick them into the tank and leave them open like sometimes we do on, on normal campers. This RV is different also. This RV does not have a standard gravity flow four inch uh, uh, sewer pipe. This, this RV, this RV has a small sewer pipe. This is my sewer line. Boy, that is small. It's only like a one inch, I do believe. So, uh, and the other kicker about it is, is that the tanks on this RV are on the other side of the RV. So literally there is a pump that is in a macerator also that 
chews up any of the toilet paper things of that sort that's in that's in the in the black tank chews it up pumps it over to this Solids. side and pumps it down so if you just left the valve open some of the, some of it would, would flow through the through the pump and get over to here but not the bulk of it you have to turn the pump on and the valve system is over here inside this door here that's where the two valves are gray and black and the pump so I don't really hook this up and or uh, and leave it on all the time generally speaking we're okay in, in for a couple of days sometimes if we take showers or something I might have to come out here and dump the gray tank uh, a little bit I don't want to empty the gray tank because you want to have fluid in the gray tank to clean your hose out after you clean the black tank so uh, black tank you can keep empty that's not a problem you don't want your gray tank to go empty on you because you want that to help clean so uh, we'll leave this for another day and also if you notice on this on the end of my hose I have a valve so when I'm done there's a, if there's residual water or sewage in the line <laughs> I shut this valve off it's not going to drip and link inside the inside the container uh, compartment of the, the RV and make it stink. If it does leak or if you have any issues in these RVs, in any of these compartments, right here is a plug. You unscrew this plug here, they unscrew, and it's a hole to the down to the bottom. You spray this out with a garden hose, uh, some bleach water, something like that. So that's very nice to have that right there. So, All right, uh, good. We're gonna go pause now while Tony goes and washes his hands. <laughs> Ew. Okay, on our, our RV, we have an automatic step that comes out automatically whenever you open and close the door. I do not like this thing coming in and out, in and out, in and out while we're here. They're doing nothing but wearing out the motor. So we have a switch on the side. I'm gonna turn that step. I'm gonna hit that, it says step right there. And I'm gonna click that off. So it will stay in the out position now until we turn that back on. So while we're here, the second switch on there, if you looked on there, was for the awning. So we've already checked. We've got nothing in our way. So we'll go ahead and we'll put the awning out. I'll push it. I'll push the uh, button for out. This one is very quiet. Does not make much noise at all. Flap it straight down. That's where she's at. So the awning is out. Next item. All right. Uh, next thing we can do is we can go ahead and we can put the slide out out. That's what I usually do. And Cindy usually does this while I'm outside doing my hookups. I'll do this. Uh, she'll do the slide out. Uh, we were just out there. We didn't have any obstructions in our way. Yeah, we checked that first for sure. So we'll go ahead and go over to the uh, control panel. And there's a button here for slide extend. Okay, I already let it out about a foot or so or whatever. We're going to pause it for a second. What you want to do is you want to come over and look. Because there's a lip that sticks out that sits against your interior wall. All the way around top and on these sides. And what you want to make sure of is that down at the bottom... Nothing is falling down there. Whether you, that's, that's close enough. Whether your kids' balls fall down there, uh, we have some uh, uh, some bags that we use to keep insects out. Make sure nothing's gotten there because you don't want to op uh, op extend this out to hit and hit that, and it either jostle your 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 your, uh, your tracks or bend it or break your molding. Also, you can just look across the top, make sure there's nothing sitting on top of it, and let me check the other side. Make sure nothing's on the other side. Okay, that little bag thing's there, but it's not in the way. And we're ready to take it the rest of the way out. Once we've gotten to the space, we've gotten the jacks down and everything's uh, settled in. I'm going to go ahead and put my, my uh, tire chocks in. I just do one side. One in the front, one in the back. Keep it from moving each direction. I don't do the other side. You can do the other side so you don't see it. The problem is, is you don't see it. 
we do have a checklist which we follow uh, before we leave and checking to make sure checks but if for some reason you did follow your checklist or whatever uh, they're on this side yellow handles they stick out they pop and you can always pull those out just a little safety measure we don't have problems here sights are level we got the jacks down that's holding stuff parking brakes on but uh, wheel chucks are always a good thing to have One of the items we have that we set up is our uh, AstroTurf uh, mat for out here. And uh, we bought some, uh, I think we bought a comforter or some uh, bedding at one time. They come in these plastic bags, zippered or whatever. We save those and put things like this in them. They work great. We have had this piece. <laughs> I think we just got this at like a Home Depot. They have it on the huge rolls in the back. You just go back and tell them how many feet you want. Uh, I think they even have it pre-cut now for people. Uh, you can buy the expensive ones, that's fine. We, we've had this for, oh, 15 years, 20 years. Uh, I can't even tell you which, which camper we had that we bought this. Travel trailer, Cherokee, I remember. <laughs> was, what, 10 years ago? Oh, 15, it was longer than that. 15 years? It was like from 2005 to 2008. Just, so helps, yeah, just helps clean your feet off, uh, get the dirt off. Uh, you know, this concrete ain't perfectly clean, so, you know. Just something to wipe your feet on, put your shoes on whenever you go in. Other than that, got to put out the table. This is not the table we usually use. This is a large table. It's really just too heavy. Even though it's the, the plastic kind, uh, it's, uh, it's a large one. We had it at first. It's just too big. We bought a smaller, a smaller one. But uh, she puts decorations on it. She'll put a nice Halloween cover on it. Food, chips, whatever. We keep stuff out here, whatnot. We also have the uh, the uh, trash bag. I keep a whole roll of trash bags here in the back storage compartment. For October, it's awfully hot out here. And it's getting very close to adult beverage time. Who am I kidding? I've already got one. All right, trash is done, table set. So Tony already showed you how we hook up everything outside and usually we do these simultaneously. So he'll be outside, I'll be inside and then we synchronize some of the things like putting the slide out, which he already showed you. That's usually the first thing I do. But I like for him to go ahead and have the water and the electric hooked up because it's underneath where the slide is and it's easier to get to if you do it before we put the slide out. So as soon as he gets that done, I slip the slide out. I open all the curtains up front. I get some good natural light coming in here. I make sure the refrigerator is turned on and running good. It's on auto. We got the green light, so we're good to go. If it's flashing, that usually means I need to check something, and if I can't figure it out, then I call for Tony. Um, I look at my panel here. If I need my hot water heater on, I go ahead and flip that on. Most of the time, I leave that off um, because it does use propane only. Just to save on propane, I usually only turn that on when I need it. Sometimes I might need it when I first get in, but most of the time I don't, so I just leave that off. We don't need the water pump because that's only if you're not having your water hook up and you're filling your tank, so we don't need that. The slide's been extended. I usually do a quick check on our uh, propane. We're at a third right now, so that should get us through the weekend that we're planning on filling up. Um, so everything else looks good here. Um, the next thing I do is go ahead and get the items that I need for the RV out. I get my trash cans here, which I store in the shower. Get all of our hand soaps and goodies out from under the sink. Our cute little painted rock <laughs> as decoration.
Now usually we have our refrigerator filled and ready to go. I usually take the bars off, but today we left our camper here because we're camping at the same spot two weekends in a row. So we brought our food in a cooler, so I'm gonna have to fill up the refrigerator. Open the rest of the curtains. So I'll go ahead and finish getting out the items that we use on a daily basis. I keep out. Go ahead and open up the stove here. I like to have everything ready to go. Coffee. extra dish pan since we only have one sink unit here. Which was, what which, What was that pan? That's an oil pan that is from an, the Dollar General. That is an oil changing pan from Dollar General store. And which you could see in another video. <laughs> get out um, my touch lamp here. You always use it. ready to go. Place mats out. Everything's going to be good on the inside here. And then if I have any uh, activity items or campground information, I usually keep it hanging up on our magnet board that Tony made. Love it. Next to our all of our magnets and places we visited. So the additional things that I do inside is get all of the trash bags in the trash cans. So we have one here, and I use grocery store bags for our little cans. We have one up front in the cab area, and then we have one in the bathroom. So get those in, and sometimes I double them up. I think this one has a hole in the bottom, so it's going to be doubled up. sheets for the bedroom so I got to get that on maybe oh you hit it right you there we go <laughs> third time to turn all right so I get the we got clean sheets for the bed so I'll get those out here in just a minute we have little items we put on our bedside table. Picture of our animals, my pug. She's no longer with us, but I carry her picture. And then we have our chargers for our phones and our remote control. We do have a TV in here. So just little things, sometimes I keep jewelry in here. And this basket, this laundry basket is the basket that goes in the laundry chute that's over on Cindy's side. Yeah. If you want to see that little uh, RV hack, check out the link. It'll be in the eye in the sky. <laughs> we'll put a link. Where's my moose? Uh, right here. So when you're traveling, we keep everything on the floor because if you don't, I did keep it on the bedside table one time. But then when we got where we are going, everything was crushed on the floor. So now it travels on the floor. So don't make that mistake. And actually, I did have a candle, and it actually broke. So, here it is right here. It had a little glass thing it set in. Not anymore. It's in the trash, and I just kept the candle part with the plastic around it. Tony's moose. My moose. He only wants manly stuff on his side, so I guess I better get rid of the candle. And then we have our walkie-talkies that we set up. And he has this little handy-dandy knife. Oh, you want that? Yes. <laughs> I missed my knife this week. So yeah, a few extra phone chargers in here and some hand gel. And then Tony has a couple pamphlets of some different types of trees and poisonous oaks and I'm trying sumacs. To, I'm trying to learn my trees. Learn there's, how. An, there's another one in here. Yeah, I think they're all the same. Trees yeah. of Indiana. Man stuff. 
And then if I have any extra clothes, I'll go ahead and put those away. I have extra room up here. I usually set some stuff too. And I usually add towels sometimes if we want extra dark because I like it pitch black. So we have the darkening curtains, but they're not dark enough for my liking. So I hang the towels up. Her Disney towels. Yeah, they're already up there. So uh, anything else? Nope. Here, it's hot in here. I'm gonna put my hair up. Yep. And oh yeah, here's the fun cabinet. It's a liquor cabinet. <laughs> oh yeah, and a thing of toilet paper. We also have the extra bunk up top. We can let it down if someone is going to be staying with us. Or if we want to store stuff up there, we'll go ahead and put it down. So this holds up to 250 pounds. It's good for kids. My son does sleep up there sometimes. He's not a kid anymore though. gonna go ahead and put it back up because we're not gonna be using it this weekend so we're finally finished setting up here at Lake Rudolph campground this is just a little walk through of the final setup. Get our lights up. We got our artificial mat down, tablecloths, firewoods ready, chairs, table. This is our new bike cover we just put on couple weekends ago. Got all of our hookups in except for the sewer. It's just laying on the ground ready. Our Lake Rudolph golf cart. Still got to decorate it for Halloween. Go ahead and step inside. Got a few Halloween decorations going on. The inside. There's a scary ghoul laying on the couch. Good to go. I think we're set up, Tony. Ready to roll. Now.
Time to camp. Time to camp. Time to have fun.